This is problem number 35 from chapter 5. In it, a block is projected up a frictionless inclined plane with initial speed of 3.5 meters per second. The angle of incline is 32 degrees. How far up the plane does the block go? How long does it take to get there? What's the speed when it gets back to the bottom? And I'm doing this problem because you are going to have the wonderful opportunity of doing a million problems with objects on an inclined plane. And so it's important to understand how those work. And so I've drawn our picture here, showing our initial velocity of 3.5 meters per second and our angle of 32 degrees. But then I've, I've redrawn the picture for our instant that we are coming to rest because how far up the plane does the block go? It's gonna go as far as it can before it goes to a velocity of zero and then turns back down and, or turns around and goes back down again. And so I've drawn a free body diagram right here we have the normal force that is of course perpendicular to our surface we have the force due to gravity or the weight going directly down and i've sketched right here so this is our angle of theta which is 32 degrees but i wanted to show how to get the components of your weight vector and so if this is our theta then this angle right in this corner would be 90 minus theta Meaning that since these are also 90 degrees to each other, if this is 90 minus theta, then this is theta again, which tells us that this component of our force would be our force due to gravity times cosine theta. And over here, it would be the same as equivalent to this right here, which of course is awful. So this would be the force due to gravity sine theta. And so these are our components. We often will write them as mg sine theta and mg cosine theta, because of course the force due to gravity is mass times gravity. And so these are terms that you're gonna use again and again and again. So th the other important thing to note here is that when you're dealing with an inclined plane, you want to assume that your x-axis is on the incline. So I've drawn mine here going the positive direction of X going up the incline. That's not necessary, but I just chose it because we were given our positive velocity going in that direction. But so the positive direction could be up or down the plane, but it's just important that your X direction is here. And so our force in that X direction would be our MG sine theta right here. So with that, I know that my force equals or sorry, force in the x direction equals mg sine theta. And in fact, since I've considered this to be the positive x direction, that would be a negative mg sine theta because we see that this is going in the opposite direction of our positive. And as always, force is equal mass times acceleration. And so I can use this piece of information to figure out what my acceleration is in the x direction. And so I can see here that the masses will just cancel out. And I find that my acceleration in the x direction is negative g sine theta. So we know that g is constant at 9.8. And we know that our theta is constant at 32, which tells us that we have a constant acceleration. And so that reminds us of our kinematic equations. Oh, look, here's some. And so we can use this. If we have an initial velocity and a constant acceleration, we're allowed to use whichever one makes the most sense for us. And so if I want to figure out how far up the plane my block goes, I'm looking for uh, the delta x. I'm looking for the, the distance that I've gone. And so I might first look at my first equation here. And I'm like, oh, hooray, I have delta x. But then I keep going and I'm like, okay, excellent. I have initial velocity. However, I don't have time. And so maybe I'll need to use this and kind of come back to it, but let's go to a different equation and see if it works any better. The second equation, of course, I still have a problem of time there and we don't even have a delta X, so this is useless right now. So we go to the third one and then you ask yourself, hey, self, do I know the final velocity? And the answer is, yeah, I sure do. Because once the block goes up as far as it can, then my velocity is gonna be zero. So I'll write that down here. So final velocity equals zero. My initial velocity, as we know, is 3.5. My acceleration, of course, this is not gravity, it's negative g sine theta. So we already have that right there. 
And then our change in X is what we're looking for. So bingo, this one's gonna work great. So let's plug it in. So I have zero squared equals 3.5 squared plus two times negative G sine 32 times my delta X. And this of course is what I'm solving for. So we'll plug in 9.8 for that G right there. And we will find out that our change in X is 1.18 meters. And so that is how far up the block goes up the incline. So how long does it take to get there? Again, we have a constant acceleration, so I can use my same kinematic equations. And so I go back, oh, so this is part A. For part B, we have all of the same exact information, but now we wanna solve for time. And so we're gonna use one of the first two equations. And I know that I have final and initial and acceleration, so that might work. I now have my distance, I have my initial, and I'm solving for time. So both of them would work, but I'm going to look at these and notice that I, I this first equation would give me a quadratic since there's a time squared and a time. So it'd be much more simple to use the second one. Additionally, to solve it without using our answer for part A, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if we would have made a mistake and then plugged it in here, then that would be doubling the mistake. So I'll use the second equation. So V equals V naught plus AT. So again, final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is 3.5. My acceleration is still negative G sine 32. And then the time is what we're solving for. And so again, if I plug in 9.8 for this, I will find out that my time equals 0.674 seconds. All right, last but not least, what is the speed? And remember speed is just looking for magnitude. They don't really care about direction when it gets back to the bottom. Now, if I'm using my kinematic equations, or more specifically, if I have a constant acceleration, then this motion is going to be acting almost identical mathematically to projectile motion, which tells me that if my initial velocity is 3.5 meters per second going up the ramp, then if I go to zero here and I'm going back down the ramp, then my velocity is going to be 3.5 meters per second in the other direction because of symmetry. And so the speed, of course, we don't care about the negative. So my velocity is 3.5 meters per second. If you weren't sure about that, you could still go back and use this equation here and uh, solve for our final, noting that our starting from the top, essentially. So the top would be our initial, and that would be a zero velocity, and then you're solving to go down to the bottom. But since we have symmetry, we are done. Bum, bum, bum.